Hello everyone! Happy April and welcome back to the YouTube channel. We are doing some spring cleaning in our yard. We've been cleaning up the fence rows, gathering firewood, and that kind of led us into today's project. We had that tornado rip through here about August of last year. and We've had a pine tree on our garden. So you can see it hit the side rail. That's a hog panel. This used to be the pig pen. And it blocked the gate, so it made harvesting hard. And it would make it even harder to start planting. But we were able to hop over the center of the fence over on the other side and tend to the garden, but could not get through this pine tree stuff. It was full of sap, it was pokey, so it was best to, to let it lay down, dry up and die. And today, we started working on that. We lost a whole pine tree to the wind. That's the top of it. We were able to cut it to that point today, rip out the stump, and there's a beautiful row of maple trees growing in there, so there's some filler coming in and a couple of walnut trees. Those trees were already growing on this opposite side. I don't know if I want the walnut trees growing above the garden area. It was never intended to be the garden. It was a good sheltered area for wind for pigs, which is why it was hog panels on there. So there's a second tree that got topped and it landed on top of a corn chopper that I was working on. Dropped that project and moved on. I'm sure you probably heard that wind kicking up. We've got a uh, crop field across the road from us that is not ours and it's bare land. It's a long ways until a, a wood row. No wind break so we get a lot of wind and these pine trees really were helping. Now we're trying to figure out quite what to do with this one. He's thinking about like tying it down and staking it to the ground. It's still there but it's it's leaning so it may have had root damage from it heaving up and we don't want it to fall on the garden. We don't want it to fall on the fence and cause more damage and we want to keep the family safe at the same time. So we're deciding what to do about that because we're losing all of our privacy for our pen. You never know with having a fence close to the road what could happen. Um, it's too far from the road for a car to crash into it but you know people could mess with your animals at night. You just don't know. And this tree had a double top so it's left a wide open space and the last tree I think was oh maybe a little stunted from the maple tree I'm sorry the walnut tree being next to it or from this one having a double top and it fell on my pig hut and blocked potato harvest so we're digging up the potatoes letting them dry out so we can use them for seed and Murdoch has already been working on ripping out weeds they're taking off because we haven't been able to get in here and we don't want stuff like this going to seed. But he's already got garlic and onions growing here. So it's time to get in here and start weeding. This big bushy tree growing here is elderberries. And elderberries are great for zinc and like defense against colds and flus. So we make a concoction of that. But this was just a old dying off row of a bush. I don't remember what it's called. Kind of like a snowball bush, but there are very small white blooms that show up later in the year. But you can see it's a lot more open. So I think some sun's going to get in here and walking along this fence row needs to be trimmed up. So I've got the loppers and I'm going to go through here. I just keep cutting out as much dead as I can and trying to keep this row open because the burdocks like to grow along there. Hi kitty cat. And it'd be nice to be able to keep it cleaned up. So that's the goal. Working on all this over this next couple of days. Just a little bit at a time. Just like with all our other jobs, we don't push on ourselves that it has to be done today. Just as much as we got, I can't believe how far he got. I had to leave and take care of some other things. Doing other jobs around the farm. And it's going to be getting to be dinner time. So it's just kind of clean up work at this point tonight. Well, we've been at our repairs already today. I've just been an assistant. Husband's doing the repairs. He was able to straighten up the fence a bit, the gate, to be able to save that and reuse it. The hog panel, he was able to bend that back 
after removing it. And here we were able to flip the board to fix basically the warpage of it from sitting that way for so long. And we're using lag screws and construction screws. It was originally nailed on, so it was an easy removal. And now we're being able to straighten it out and put it back together. All free repairs.
Well, the repair is all complete. The stump and the trunk are hauled away and all the branches here. So now Murdoch and his little siblings can start raking up all the pine needles to get that out of there. That doesn't feel good to get poked in the hand by that when you're working in the soil. And then we can get back to working on the top of the tree that's over here. Well, our front garden area is coming along. You can see the corn chopper has been revealed. The whole middle part of the tree has been hauled away. The second tree top still needs to go, but we didn't have a reason to run the backhoe yesterday. But one thing we always do every year is apply for a burn permit through our township. You have to have a burn permit on file and you call and there's an automated message saying if it is a burn day or a um, hold off when there is hot dry weather. Um, a lot of times they say no don't or too windy. Today it's a little damp. It was raining during the night so it's a great day to be burning. The kids have already been out here. They've been sorting out what trees they want to keep to grow back in here, making plans for flower borders and different things. They hauled up all the chicken manure that we've been holding off on and look at this. Trey got a free rototiller from the neighbor last year and he figured out what it needed. Came out here, rototilled it all in. They've got garlic and onions already popping up from planting them. Cold hardy type things. Root vegetables are ready to go in the ground. Let me show you the rhubarb. So these are my rhubarb divides or starts from last year. They wintered over, we had them in the house. I let the everything about them just dry out and go dormant. Um, did not keep them moist. I had put my strawberries out a little early and then forgot about them one night. So this whole pot, what was left, died off. So I'll divide some off. We want to transfer these to the ground this year so that we don't have to worry about pots in and out of the house. But these had all been buried underneath that pine tree. And these are my little rhubarb starts. I save all of our sour cream, yogurt type containers. I don't know what we'll do about this next year because we're gonna run out eventually. Maybe I'll hit the recycling center and see if we can pick some up for free. They're all off to a good start, setting up all their secondary leaves. Good rhizome or root clump in there. I planted a handful of sunflower seeds here. We'll get some zinnias going here real quick. We're all getting the gardening bug. George is our young farmer. He is six and a half this year, and he decided to take the area that had been uh, killed off the grass from having round bales sitting here that were wrapped last year. We sold those all off this winter, and it made a good start for him. He's got some sunflowers planted. He wants to add his own things here. I've always thought this was a great spot because of the hillside for doing gardening, and it's coming along real good. Something has already come along though. That's new. He saw that it was setting out its second set of leaves. And something came and chomped on it. We're close to nature on a farm. So there's always rabbits growing around here, running around. And he wanted me to set a live trap out. There's a woodchuck hole over there that doesn't seem to be being lived in. So maybe we'll catch something. But look at this rhubarb. It is doubling in size every day. Like I said before, we always sell this off. One of the things about keeping the rhubarb growing, oh, I missed one. I was out here this morning. I take these seed pods off because that lets it go all year without getting tough or rotting out. And I just keep harvesting um, from it all year. I think this is a 30 foot row maybe, but I just take all these off. Discard these, I throw them in the compost pile because if you don't, they will attract rhubarb bugs or rhubarb weevils. And uh, they like to burrow little holes in there and lay eggs. So I like to keep things clean and nice. On a non-rainy day, I'll dust these all with DE or diatomaceous earth. They've already been treated with uh, chicken manure in the fall when we put it to bed. So this is a good gardening start for the year. This is our compost uh, pile of burning. What doesn't compost down gets pushed into a pile for burning. 
and the nice thing about doing it on a day like today, neighbors for miles can't really see the smoke because it just blends in with the cloudiness of the day. Every spring is a different job on the farm as far as cleanups. This year it's cleaning up storm damage from late summer, last fall, and getting things kind of off and going so that we can get into harvesting our hay, growing our animals, all that sort of thing. It's been really good filming it, working, getting ready. We're all excited to start planting the garden. So stay tuned, watch those playlists, watch that homesteading playlist because that's where all that gardening is going to be. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.